Our next guest will be fighting Luis Santos in the main event at One Championship Vela of Champions April 24th. He's a former Bellator welterweight and current One Championship welterweight champion. Ben Askren, welcome to Submission Radio. It's a pleasure to have you back on the program. Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. It's great to be chatting to you, Ben. Now, it's been a few months since we last spoke to you, Ben, so we have some big questions. And yes, we'll talk about your opponent, Luis Santos. We'll talk about the title fight at one championship, 26 Valor of Champions. We'll even talk about what's going to happen on April 24th when it all goes down. But first, we want to know, what's the latest with you in disc golf? And are you still one of the best pound-for-pound disc golf players? Uh, Well, it's been cold here in Wisconsin because, as you know, we're just coming out of the winter and we're, we're far north here. And I just got my first round in yesterday, so I'm pretty excited. And uh, I don't really have a week and uh, about a week and a half till I leave for Asia, and they actually don't have any disc golf in Asia, unfortunately. Yeah. Unbelievable. And you're a bit modest there, Ben. We actually had a look at your Twitter, and it looks like you got what they call a birdie. Can you tell us a little bit about that? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, just uh, had a really good shot on the first hole, put it right next to the pin and put it in nice and easy. Well, you make it sound so easy, mate, but I don't know if uh, the boys from Submission Radio would be able to get one, you know, before <laughs> they stop canning the strokes. Well, I heard, the, I heard the courses down in Australia are pretty tough, so you guys will have to go check it out someday. Def- yeah, it's, it's definitely on the to-do list. Now, uh, Ben, before we jump into your fight, we just want to have a chat about UFC 185. Obviously, you were in the corner of former champion Anthony Pettis. Just wondering, that whole experience having uh, being in his corner, Anthony had a very difficult night against IDA. What was that like? Yeah, well, I, I've been in Anthony's corner a lot, and that was, uh, that was the first one where he came up short, so it was, uh, it was very unfortunate. Um, you know, I think it was that he took a hard shot in the first round, and I think that that took a lot out of him, and he's kind of having trouble seeing out of the one eye. So uh, I, I don't really think he fought to his full potential because he got hit so hard in that first round. How, you know, from a corner's perspective, how soon into the matchup did you guys know that Anthony's eye was seriously damaged and he couldn't see out of it? Well, I guess I didn't really know until after the fight because Duke, Duke and Cutman went in the ring, and I was kind of on Anthony's back during the the break. Yeah. And so I couldn't really hear what he was saying. I could hear what Duke was saying, but I couldn't really hear what Anthony was saying. So uh, I didn't really catch on until a little later in the fight that it was that bad. Yeah, absolutely. You know, Duke Rufus, he's gotten some slack for not stopping the fight right away when Anthony said he couldn't see. But it's not all people. What, what people don't understand is it's not always an easy decision to make. You know, how pissed off would have Anthony been if Duke just threw in the towel for him, didn't let him finish off the fight? I mean, I said that that would be unacceptable. And, you know, as as someone who I'm a coach and a fighter, mm-hmm. let me fight, right? I mean, it, it's not – a lot of people want to make it out to be more than it is, but it's not a nice sport. The, the whole point of a mixed martial arts fight is to injure the other person to the point at which they won't continue, right? Mm. So when you know every time you step in the cage, there's a good chance you're going to get hurt, and that's part of the risk you assume as a fighter. So if I'm in there fighting, I don't care. Let, let me fight. And – uh you know, I'm going to keep fighting until I can't fight anymore. And, and uh, you know, Anthony was never hurt too bad. There was a lot of ground fighting. Obviously, the eye was an issue. But Anthony kept fighting the whole time. And um, I don't think he wanted to quit. And I know as a, a fighter, if I was in there, I definitely wouldn't have wanted to quit. Yeah, absolutely. Now, uh, Ben, you tweeted a funny picture of yourself uh, during the event outside Johnny Hendricks' dressing room with the caption, I keep knocking, but he won't let me in. Do you think the fight with uh, Johnny will ever happen? Well, uh, yeah, that's... Uh, Tough question because it's not all, all up to me. And sometimes when stuff's up to you, it's easy to control and you can determine. But when it's not up to you, right, mm-hmm. when it's, uh, there's a lot of other forces that can happen, then that's where it gets to be a sticky situation. So, um, yeah, it's hard to say. I don't know if it'll ever happen. Yeah, that's one of those matchups the fans will be talking about for years. Hopefully, it comes together. Obviously, Johnny fought on the same card. Just wondering, did you get an opportunity to see his performance against Mad Brown, and what did you think about it? Yeah, I thought. Uh, I mean, I thought he fought a smart but not so exciting fight. I don't think he, you know, he got a lot of takedowns, but he didn't do a lot with with the ground and pound or, or you know, trying to finish a submission of any sort. Matt Brown doesn't have a He's not a terrible wrestler, but he doesn't have a strong wrestling background, so he was easy to take down a bunch of times, and that made for a really easy night for Johnny. 
Now, it seems, Ben, that the UFC have been embracing you more, even mentioning your name here and there during the UFC 185 broadcast. And then, of course, there was that picture of you and Joe Silva. You guys are smiling and happy. You know, how, uh, li- how likely is it that we will see Ben Askren in the UFC at some point, possibly in 2015? You know, it seems like the company may regret not signing you when they had the chance. Yeah, they may regret it, but I still don't think I'll be showing up there. And the Joe Silva picture, it was just like, uh, that was the only seat left on the bus when I got on. So yeah. I sat down and, you know, obviously it was kind of awkward. So I made the best of a, a not so great situation and kind of had a laugh of it. Yeah, let's let's go into that situation for a second because it seems pretty funny. You and Joe Silva sitting on a bus. What do you guys talk about? Do you, do you break down old bar jokes? What do you guys talk about on the bu- on the uh, bus ride, or do you just look look straight, or do you guys just do the whole phone thing and no, just jump I on said, the phone? No, I, I, I sat down. I said, I said, if you're going to make a proposition to me, the answer is no. Oh, so I just kind of, <laughs> I kind of broke the ice right away, <laughs> uh, right off the bat, and then uh, you know there was a lot of banter between everyone. I was talking to Roy Nelson and his wife; they're sitting next to us, and Duke and Joe were talking. So you know, there's a lot of people sitting there, so it wasn't like he was the only person I had to talk to. Yeah, that's true. Fortunately. He he would have been upset if, if if you're there mingling and having jokes and he's like, God, I wish Ben was chatting to me. But let's let's talk about, you know, your uh, fight. One championship, it goes down to the Philippines and uh, you know, by the time you step in the cage on April twenty fourth, it'll be almost seven months since your last fight. How do you feel about such a layoff when uh, and you know when you have these breaks, you know, is there an adjustment period when you initially step into the cage on fight night? Yeah, it, it, I think it's going to be almost eight months. And actually, unfortunately enough, in my career, I've had a handful of these longer breaks, which yep. hasn't really been ideal, but that's how it's been. And uh, so, I, you know, I had nine months between Douglas Lima and Carl Amasu. Yep. And then, you know, when I had when I got down with my Bellator contract and then I you know, had the UFC negotiations and UFC negotiations, I ended up taking, shoot, how long was it? I want to say it was uh, almost 10 months before I had I got back in the cage. So I, I've, had, I've had a lot of these breaks. And, I, you know, I've never felt anything called ring rust. And I, I've been on record saying that I think it's kind of a, an excuse that people make when they haven't been in there a long time. And I've been competing my whole life. I stay in shape. I stay ready. I'm ready to fight. And there's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, there's no ring rust for me. There's nothing like that. Yeah, now Ben, you're 30 years old, which is a young man in MMA terms. But given how long some of your breaks are in between fights, is it ever concerned to you that during some of your prime years, you may not be active as other fighters, for example? Yeah, I mean, it's not something like you know, it's one of the things like I said, I can't control it, so it's hard to get mad about it, right? Mm-hmm. If there's nothing I can do about it, like for example, during the the Lima to the Amasu break, they said they wanted to push me on to Spike TV because Bellator was making its debut on Spike and they gave me some money. So, yeah, whatever. It's cool. And then, uh, and then you know, my contract with Bellator is up. And then so really from from that on, it's, it's not like I can just jump in and fight someone. I got to figure out where I'm going, who I'm fighting for, and all that stuff. So, uh, while it's unfortunate, it was definitely necessary gaps. And then I know one FC said they're really hoping for me to fight four times this year, so it's looking like hopefully it'll be a really busy year for me, and I'll be able to make the most out of this year. Awesome. You know, with uh, you know, with one FC or actually your first twelve fights in MMA career, they were in the US except for one, which was in Canada. Your last two fights were in Singapore and Dubai, and your next fight will obviously be uh, in the Philippines. You know, what is it like traveling to so many different places, and is it hard having to adjust to a new location before every fight? I enjoy it. I enjoy the traveling a lot. I think uh, for me, it's not a big deal. I mean, I know in wrestling we travel to a lot. Yeah, uh, a lot more difficult places. You know, we traveled to Russia and Ukraine when it, you know, it was kind of tougher, tougher conditions than what we're dealing with. You know, Singapore, Dubai, those are fantastic places to go, and so um, it hasn't really felt that different to me. Oh yeah, Ukraine stuff, and uh, I'm actually from Ukraine myself originally, so I know what those cold winters are like, Ben. Now, your next opponent, Luis Santos, is an MMA veteran with over 70 fights and coming in on a seven-fight win streak. Obviously, you've versed the best of the best outside the UFC, but would you say he's one of your toughest and stiffest tests yeah. thus far? 
Um, yeah, obviously he's, he's definitely a tough opponent. There's no, there's no doubt about that. Um, as far as toughest, I was, I think it's always hard to say because a lot of times styles make matchups, that kind of thing. Uh, you know, I would still go back to Douglas Lima. I think he's an outstanding fighter. He's someone I fought. Now it's been, it's been a while now, but it was April of 11, maybe, or April, of, no, April of 12, I fought him. And, uh, you know, I think he's an outstanding opponent, and I think he's shown himself really well. I think, you know, I think I want to say six or seven fights in a row he's won since then. So, um, yeah, I mean, obviously Santos is a tough test, but I think I'm going to get in there and handle business. Handle business, love it. Well, we know obviously your skill set. You know, what would you say are some of Lewis's biggest threats coming into this fight? Is there anything that you look at and you go, well, i got to, I got to look out for that? He, obviously, he's got the wild punch and the kick, so I expect him to be really wild early in the fight and throw something and just hope that it lands. Because that's really his only chance. I mean, it, it, there's really the chance of him winning a, uh, you know, a five-round tough fight against me is it, it's zero. I yeah. mean, there's no chance he's going to do that. But obviously in MMA with with uh, the craziness that it is, there's always a chance you can get the knockout. So that's, that's what I'm expecting out of him. And uh, I'm prepared for that. You come from one of the premier fight camps in MMA, Reef for Sports. Just wondering, what are some of the things that you've been working on in training camp for Lewis, or has it just been business as usual for Ben Askren at the training? I would say business as usual. For me, I, like I said, I don't really take a lot of time out of the gym. Even when I have these big breaks, um, I'm always in the gym. It, this is my, MMA is my job, and you know I don't do like some MMA fighters where they take a bunch of time off and, and they – they have a training camp and they try to get back into shape. I stay in shape all the time. I stay ready all the time because I know I don't have a long time left in my career. And if I'm taking time off and then wasting time getting back into shape as opposed to just getting better all the time, then it's going to make my, my job a whole lot tougher. So I'm just constantly getting better, constantly working in the gym and evolving as a fighter. And that's probably why, even though we do see big breaks between some of your fights, you do improve, you know, a lot in between them. And obviously, the last four of Oldman finishes, you know, Ben, one of the biggest, I guess, sort of criticisms from the fans is that you were head and shoulders above the other fighters in your division at one championship. You know, assuming that you beat Santos on April 24th, is there anybody else that you have your eye on? And what do you think about the welterweight picture in general at one championship? Yeah, one FC, it's uh, one championship, but... Uh... They're a new organization. They're doing their best to sign tough talent. But, yeah, I am beating everyone. But I did the same thing in Bellator, and it's my opinion that I would do the same thing anywhere. So uh, it, I am head and shoulders above everyone, but there, you know, I have the opinion that I'm head and shoulders above everyone. I just haven't got the chance to prove it yet. That would look great on a T-shirt, Ben. I reckon that could be the next Ben Askren <laughs> T-shirt. Now, you guys recently had an addition to Rufus Sports, obviously, with CM Punk starting training with you guys. We have to ask, what do you think of Punk's progress thus far as a fighter? You know what? He's very disciplined. He's very dedicated. And he works really hard. So it's, it's, a, it's a pleasure having him in the gym. And... Obviously, he's got a long way to go because he started he started kind of out of nowhere, right? Mm -hmm. Being a, a professional wrestler, he didn't really have a background coming into mixed martial arts. So um, he is getting a, a lot better, but he's still got a ways to go. And I'm just curious, Ben. Obviously, you mentioned that he came didn't really come from a strong background in martial arts. How strong was his grappling when he came to you guys um, at Duke Rufus? Was he, was he as strong as people were saying initially, or was he sort of at the beginner stage still in his grappling? Well, I'd say jiu-jitsu was uh, the best part of his game, mm -hmm. but that being said, uh, you know, it wasn't like he'd spent uh, a long time even doing that. It was, uh, it was kind of something he did on the side as opposed to something he did for sport. Yeah. Now, you know, we've been reading what you were saying, and you've had nothing but praise for Punk since he's been a part of your camp. You know, however, a lot of people and fighters were obviously livid at the fact that he was signed to the UFC, you know, as opposed to fighters like yourself or, you know, e even other people. You know, in classic Ben Askren style, you made a few jokes on Twitter about it. What was your honest thoughts, though, when you first heard about it, and have they changed since now that you actually trained together? Well, that, that, I mean, those, those were my honest thoughts about it. And I think those thoughts don't really change, and that's not really a criticism of CM Punk. That was a criticism of the UFC and what they're and what they're doing. 
Mm. That being said, CM Punk, you know, he had a great opportunity to do something he wanted to do, and it worked out really well for him, and now he gets to compete at something he wants to do. So for him, it's all good. But, uh, you know, my, my jokes stand, and uh, I stand behind <laughs> those statements. So. Mm. Absolutely. And just the final question on Punk. Obviously, he's scheduled to make his debut in the UFC soonish. How much longer do you think it would realistically take for Punk to be ready for his first fight in the UFC? I think we're shooting for around a year is, uh, is the goal. So, you know, he, he kind of really started training in January. So I think he's looking at January 2016. Is, uh, that's kind of the goal to have him in the cage and have him ready to fight. And so, just one more question on Punk before we switch topics. You know, he recently had that amateur-style scrimmage at the gym. You know, the fighter he faced, I believe, had at least four fights. You know, what did you think of how Punk handled himself, and did you see anything that made you believe that, you know, he will be successful when he makes his MMA debut? Yeah, honestly, I haven't even watched that film yet. And, uh, yeah, that Craig, Craig is a 4-0 fighter from our gym. He's really tough. And, you know, 4 pro, he's got a bunch of amateur fights also, so he's experienced. And, uh, you know, I didn't actually watch the tape, so it's hard for me to make too much out of it. Sure. All right, Ben. Now we're going to do something with you we like to call the tap out round. It's a bunch of fun questions, and you answer with the first thing that comes to mind. Sort of like word association, uh, but sometimes you may have some more things gets, to say, gets me which in is fine. All the time. Well, not this, this time, because the first question is, Ben, and this is quite an important question here. We saw you, Front Row Brian, and Chell Sonnen were hanging out at the amateur wrestling. And Sonnen had to do some push-ups over a lost bet. Can you fill us in on what the details were? What was the bet that Charles Sonnen lost? Yeah, that actually wasn't. Uh, I didn't make the bet with him. It was someone else, and it was over the. It was in the semifinal match. It was Kevin Gadsden versus uh, the kid from Duke. I can't remember his name right now, but Sonnen thought the guy from Duke was going to win, and and they, so they were betting on it, and he lost. He had to pay up with some push-ups. <laughs> there you go, push-ups for Sonnen. Now, you know, we, we were speaking about you being head and shoulders above the rest. You know, speaking of head and shoulders, what's the secret to keeping the afro on point? I, well, it's actually not head and shoulders. It's Pantene Pro-V, hydrogen curls. It's, uh, <laughs> it's an I've used for a long time. It keeps my hair nice and soft and not nappy. Yeah, your your real rival isn't Johnny Hendricks, it's Leona Machida, because he's got the head and shoulders contract, so <laughs> I'd like to see shampoo versus shampoo between you two. Now, Ben, obviously you're an amazing wrestler, one of the best in MMA, if not the best. What's your res favorite wrestling takedown? Just plain and simple, single leg. I keep keep it real, keep it easy, and uh, you know, single is the best takedown in wrestling. Now, if you ask me a takedown for MMA, I would say... Double leg takedown. But for wrestling, for real wrestling, single leg takedown. All right. Uh, we all know the hilarious Justin Bieber roast is about to come out. If you could roast one wrestler, who would it be and why? Hmm. That is a good question. If I could roast one wrestler, who would it be? Or it could be oh, an MMA man. fighter. Now, now you, know, I, you know who I think would be a really funny one? And mm. It's just because I know him so well. I think Tyron Woodley would be really funny. Uh, yeah, oh, man, that, that would be hilarious. Comedy Channel needs to pick that one up. Now, what's the craziest kick that you've seen from Anthony Pettis in the training room? And he has he taught you the Matrix jump off the cage kick yet, Ben? Man, I don't I don't jump very well. So <laughs> I'm more of a, a land creature. <laughs> so yeah, I don't do too much flying and stuff. And Anthony's always, 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 always do wild kicks. So I, I kind of stick to my own routine on that. But he, he would have, he would have, you would have at least tried it. Well, the guys at the gym would have at least tried it a couple of times, right? He would have sneakily shown you guys the secrets to flying off the cage. You would have at least attempted it, right? How did you go on your attempt? No, I don't even attempt that. I said, <laughs> that's not for me. And then I just go about my business. I feel like you're playing possum, Ben. On April 24th at one championship, we're going to see a, another <laughs> Matrix kick, and, and then we'll be like, yeah, yeah, well, I've been knows? drilling this in practice. I wouldn't get my hopes up if I were you. All right. Well, on March 8th, you tweeted, he tried to take me down, so I had to make him humble and break his back. What did this innocent person do to get put in the dreaded camel clutch? Oh, that was my brother's roommate, and he tried to double leg me. So I, <laughs> I, you know, I scrawled, got hit him on the ground, and stepped over for the quick camel clutch, and, and uh, the Iron Chief even tweeted me back on that one. I think he appreciated my technique. Nice. <laughs> Okay, Ben, time for the tough questions. Give us the best afro out of the following options, okay? So we've got a few options here for afros, and we want you to choose the best one, all right? Okay. 
Okay, so we've got Kyle from South Park. We've got the American painter, art instructor, and TV host, Bob Ross. Or we have the music sensation, Lenny Kravitz. Which one do you choose? The only one I can really think about in that group is Lenny Kravitz. Uh, so I'll pick him. All right, All right. Bob Ross, he is a famous, uh, he teaches people how to paint. Um, he's, he's quite famous. <laughs> well, L- L- Lenny has... But I feel like one of those Australian jokes that they like, you know, sometimes in uh, in different countries, they pick up on certain funny things from other countries, and that must be one. Because oh yeah, it's like know, a spoon in the glass. I could not tell you who Bob Ross is. We're gonna tweet you pictures after this interview, by the way. Yeah. Just so you know. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> okay. Ben, we're going to dust this one off for you, right? The last person we asked this question was TJ Dillashaw in 2014, right? If you could fight 100 duck-sized horses or 10 horse-sized ducks, which would you choose and why? I'd go with the the second option, 10 of them, because ducks just, they're not that scary. I think you maybe give them a throat chop or something, they'd be done. Throat chop. These are are duck-sized horses that you're fighting, Ben, so... It, it, no, look, no, no, they're, they're horse-sized ducks. Horse-sized ducks. So it's a, yeah. it's a, it's a so tough one. Them. Okay, no takedowns there. Finally, give us the prediction. How are you planning on beating Luis Santos at one championship, Valor of Champions? Well, I'd say it's not going to be anything fancy. I'm going to do what I do everywhere else. I'm going to stare at him. I'm going to walk across the cage. And then I'm going to grab him and throw him on the ground. And I'm going to punch him a bunch of times. All right, well, business as usual. Guys, don't forget to catch Ben on Twitter, at Ben Askren. Watch him kick ass April 24th at the Valor of Champions. For more information, go to 1FC.com. Ben, as always, absolute pleasure chatting to you. All right, thanks a lot, guys. Appreciate it. 